everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be talking about the R.L. Stein books that I decided to read. So I thought I, I've only read a few R.L. Stein books and so I thought it would be kind of fun since um, it was the end of October to give R.L. Stein a, a go with his book since it is uh, my Halloween and just kind of read some of his books and see what they were like. So I read like five Goosebumps books two Nightmare Rooms, and then one uh, Fear Street book, but it was one of the relaunches, so it wasn't one of the originals. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of a variety, just to see what they were like. And um, so, the, I read the first five Goosebumps, and so the first one is Welcome to Dead House, and this one is about Amanda and Josh, and they um, are having to move into this a new area into this new home and it's a creepy old house and they're not really impressed with it right off the bat um but you know their parents are like you know it'll be okay but will it because uh there are some kids around town and they start noticing some really kind of strange things especially when it seems like everybody says they've lived in their house <laughs> They're kind of like, how can these other kids have lived in the same house I lived in and still be here? So, yeah. Uh, I, I really liked Welcome to Dead House. Um, it was probably my, my favorite one out of all the books that I read. Uh, it just had that really kind of fun, eerie, kind of creepy feel to it. Uh, I probably didn't give any of the R.L. Stein books like over like 3 to 3.5 stars. Because, I mean, they just didn't really, you know, I mean, they're little, they're like kids books, so they didn't really have like a big punch to them or anything like that. Like some of the the newer middle grade horror books have, um, these are definitely, I think, for like the younger, um, but it's kind of fun. I thought it was kind of fun just to see how the level of scare was with the R.L. Stein books compared to kind of like nowadays. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, it was good. I think that it's, it was creepy, and I listened to them on audiobook. That was the other thing. I did listen to all these on audiobook, and I do think that listening to them on audiobook kind of gives them a little bit more spookiness, because if the, if the narrator's good, and so most of these had pretty, um, pretty decent narrators, if the narrator is good, they kind of knew how to fluctuate the voice that they were portraying of these kids to where you knew that they were scared and things like that, which leans a, a little bit more atmosphere to these little books. And so, yeah, so I give this one probably 3.5. Um, it could be four stars because it was really my favorite, um, but probably 3.5 and four stars on Goodreads. And then the the next one was, um, I forgot to get it. I actually have this one. And that is uh, Stay Out of the Basement. And I have read this one before, but listening to it, I did think it was just a little bit creepier than maybe uh, whenever I read it. Because the first time I read it, I thought, yeah, it was just okay. It was kind of a... A strange story and I think that's like a lot of the stuff with R.L. Stein. A lot of times they might not be so spooky but they're just strange. <laughs> and yeah so this one is uh, about Dr. Brewer and he is a scientist. He works with plants and he has recently lost his job and he's been working down in the basement and uh, his two kids are kind of like you know what's up with the dad he's kind of acting a little bit strange and everything and he keeps telling him to stay out of the basement he doesn't want them going anywhere near the basement to where his experiments and things like that are but of course they are kids and they are curious and so they do sneak down in there and see some really weird things going on with plants <laughs> And they start to notice some weird things going on with their father, like he's growing like vines and leaves are coming out of like his head and things. So <laughs> what kind of experiments is he doing? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, this one I thought was, was particularly good on audiobook because 
there are instances where there's like whispers and like um, the plant stuff kind of has like a whispery and I just thought that was done well on audiobook and kind of made it a little bit creepier than when I read this originally the first go round. This one gets three stars. It was okay and I think kids could have a lot of fun with this. So the next one is Monster Blood and I think this one was probably my least favorite out of the five Goosebumps that I read. Okay, so this one is about uh, Evan and he has to stay with a relative that he doesn't really know very well at all and his mother feels bad about it but she's like, here's ten dollars, you know, buy you something. Yeah, like that's gonna make me feel better. And so yeah, so he has this money and he meets uh, another kid and they go to the store and they find this really kind of weird toy store. They go inside it and they're looking around at things and back in the back where he probably sh not supposed to be, he finds a can of monster blood and he wants this monster blood and the uh, proprietor of the store is like, no I can't sell you that, it's like really old. So it's like really old and uh, it probably doesn't work whatever was in it and I don't want to, but he's like man but I really want this I want this monster blood and he's like I got money you know how much do you want me you know how much do you want for it and his friend's like oh man I, I wish I would have saw that if I would have saw that I would have got it before you and kind of thing so it's it's like why is this monster blood so <laughs> important that these kids want it but you know I guess maybe because it's monster blood. But uh, he finally gives in and says, you know, he'll sell it for him for like a couple bucks. And so they take it. And it's like, you know, you open it up and it's kind of like that slimy goo stuff. And they're, you know, at first it's like, well, that's not really as interesting as I thought it was going to be kind of a thing. Kind of a letdown. But it's, they have it in like this ball and then um, his dog ends up. Uh, bite, biting it and like he eats a little bit of it and they're like oh I hope that doesn't hurt him you know because it's his little dog but he kind of like forgets about it after a while and they have this you know just puts it back in the can but one thing he notices is it the next time he looks at it, it like expands like it's bigger like what the little ball of stuff is is a bigger ball of stuff and then uh, he notices something strange about his dog his dog is bigger than it was before and so yeah, there is something strange going on with this monster blood, and, uh, yeah, it, it was just, I don't know, it was okay, uh, it just, I, I don't know, it was just a little bit hard to imagine this, uh, monster blood, but when you find out, like, wh why things were happening or whatever, it was, it was even kind of weirder because... It, it, you can't, I can't explain it without, you know, spoiling, but I don't know. It was just, it was just kind of, I don't know, weird. <laughs> How many times am I going to say that it was weird, but it, it was just weird. I didn't find it scary, just strange. I don't even think kids would probably find it scary, really. You know, trying to think like a, a kid, and I just don't know. But I didn't think it would be that scary. Okay, so the next one is um, Say Cheese and Die, and this one is about an old camera, and the the version I had when I listened to it on audiobook has, like, the newer cover, and I thought the newer cover was kind of cool. The old cover is, you know, I think kind of kooky fun. This one just looks scarier to me than the old cover, but so it's about a camera, and... Um, Greg and some friends, they decide to sneak into this kind of strange guy's house and they find this really kind of cool camera and they were just playing around with it and Greg took a picture of one of his friends, Michael I think it was, and whenever, it's like a Polaroid type and so whenever they get the picture and they look at it and uh, it looks like it shows Mike like falling and then all of a sudden the railing breaks and Michael falls and so he's kind of like Greg's like, that was kind of weird and he's like I'm pretty sure I took a picture of you before you fell and they're like oh no it was probably you probably took the picture whenever I was falling or whatever and they don't really think a whole lot about it well then 
something happens, they have to run out real quick, and um, Greg ends up taking the camera with him instead of leaving it there because they were in a hurry to try to get out of the house. And they're like, you know, you stole this camera. And he goes, well, it's not like I meant to. And they take more pictures. And every time they take a picture, something really strange happens. So he takes a picture of his dad's brand new car and it shows it like crashed. And then something happens. And uh, one of his friends is like, you know, take a picture. And he's like, I don't want it. I don't think we should. I think there's something really bad and wrong about this picture. Or not the picture, but the camera. And... But they want, you know, to take pictures with it, and so all these other, like, some bad things happen, and, and it's just, it was, it was a little cheesy, you know, say cheese and die, <laughs> but, uh, it, it was, it was a little creepy, I think. The fact that you have a camera, and you can take pictures with this camera, and it shows you, like, what's going to happen to this person, I mean, I would never want that kind of responsibility to know that I took this person's picture and now something bad is going to happen to... Because it was never anything good happening to that person. It was always something bad happening to that person. And so, yeah, so... Nasty little camera in that one. But, yeah, I thought it was kind of fun. I give it three stars, but maybe 3.5 stars. But I would say it's probably, out of this list, probably my second favorite one out of the Goosebumps. And then the last Goosebump one I read was The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. And this one is about Gabe and his family are in Egypt. And they were looking at some of the stuff there. His uncle lives there and works in like the tombs and things like that. And then his parents get a call that they have to go to Alexandria. And um, Gabe doesn't want to go because he wants to see the tombs they promised him, you know, all this stuff that's happening, I think, in Cairo or whatever. And so they ask the uncle if he could, like, watch him, and they're like, sure. And, of course, there is another kid involved because his uncle has a daughter, and <laughs> so he has to stay with both of them. And they get into, go exploring into the tombs, and they kind of get lost, and they play around in the tombs a little bit. And there's supposed to be, like, a curse that goes with this tomb and everything. And there is, of course, an um, Egyptian man there that is a little um, spooky and kind of scares the kids a little bit. And then um, they find out a little bit more about the curse of the mummy's tomb. And I was a little let down. <laughs> I guess because of the cover, I'm thinking there's going to be, like, some kind of mummy monster of sorts. And that's not really what happened in this. What was scaring them and what the scary part of it and what happened that has to do with the curse doesn't necessarily have to do with, like, a, a spooky mummy monster. And that's kind of what... I, I don't know. The cover alludes to, like, there's some kind of, you know, spooky, like, mummy or whatever, and so I was a little let down. This is probably my least favorite of the five Goosebumps books that I read. So if I was going to put them in order of um, least favorite to favorites, it would be... So my least favorite is The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, then uh, Monster Blood, then Stay Out of the Basement, then Say Cheese and Die, and then uh, Welcome to Dead House was my favorite. But overall, I could see little kids um, having a fun time with the Goosebumps. Um, I wish that there would have been these Goosebumps whenever I was, like, the age range for these. But whenever I was a kid, these hadn't come out yet. So, so the next two books that I have to talk about are from The Nightmare Room, which these came out in, like, early 2000s, I think where I think the uh, Goosebumps started in the 90s, I think. So, uh, The Nightmare Room, like the first one here, it says, was first published in 2000. And um, they're a little bit thicker than the Goosebumps. Um, like, I think the Goosebumps were, like, about 100 and 140 pages, maybe, on the large end. Uh, let's see, what was this one? Okay, so, like, this one was, if you take out all the, like, extra stuff that they put in it, 
the story is 122 pages. So they are a little bit smaller. And so Nightmare Room, to me, was kind of like a little bit of a bump up. Um, maybe those were too small or not quite as spooky and you needed something maybe a tiny bit like spookier. Uh, maybe your kid had grown out of goosebumps. Then there was the Nightmare Room. <laughs> And the first one was Don't Forget About Me. And this one was about Danielle, who um, has a little brother, Peter. And, you know, little brothers can be kind of a pain in the butt. And she's always saying how she would um, like him to be gone and um, wish he wasn't there kind of things. And always picking on him. And then her friend brings over this uh, hypnotizing like book and a coin, and um, her, Danielle and Peter's parents, got, mother, I think it's just the mother, is gone, like, to work, and so she's having to babysit Peter, and uh, they're looking up to make, um, what was it, uh, a talent show, that was it, there was a talent show, and they were going to use this hypnotizing thing, you know, it'd be really fun, I can hypnotize you, you know, like, pretend, and we can talk about past lives and all that kind of stuff. And so they're looking at the, um, the hypnotizing book, and, of course, Peter comes in, and he's all like, you know, hey, what are you doing, what are you doing, and all that stuff, and she's like, you know, just go away, this is schoolwork, we need you to go away, and he's like, oh, come on, what are you doing, um, and do you, you know how to hypnotize, and, of course, you know, being the older sister. She's like, of course I know how to hypnotize people. And then he's like, well, hypnotize me, hypnotize me, you know. And so she's like, oh, great, you know, and everything. He just won't go away. And so she decides, okay, I'm just going to do it. So she gets the coin, you know, and she's going back and forth like you're getting sleepy kind of things. And uh, saying some things that she's seen in like the, hip the hypnotist like magazine or book or whatever it was. And then she tells him, hey, he could come out of it, and, like, he's all, like, asleep, and he's not coming out of it, and so she's, like, you know, uh, Peter, quit, quit funning around, but he wouldn't, like, if he wasn't waking up, and they're starting to panic, because they're, like, is this for real, or is he just really trying to pull a prank on them, and they took, it took him a while to get him back, back to going, and <laughs> he was acting a lot stranger than he was before, and so then, you know, Danielle's worried that she's done something, and then he s seems to forget things, and he seems to, um, you know, some, and just the basic things that, like, a video game that he's, like, super good at, he sat there in front of, like, his computer, like, can you tell me how to play this? I don't, I don't remember how to, how to get started, and so she's, like, really freaking out, and thinking maybe, you know, maybe she should call her, their mother, and, like, maybe she should come home, some strange things are happening, and, it, you know, he keeps saying, don't forget about me. And so that's pretty much what it is. It's this house that they just moved in. I forgot to say that. They had just moved into this house. Seems to be a key with some things. <laughs> he moved into this house. And she learns later that it was called the Forget Me House. And so evidently there are some things in there. There was a strange thing going on in the basement. And I thought, you know, I thought this one was okay. I mean, like I said, it was just like three stars wasn't super spooky or anything like that, uh, but, you know, the fact that, uh, he was forgetting things and things like that was, it was a little creepy. I could see that being creepy for kids. Um, I think, like, if the goosebumps were not quite spooky enough, that maybe the nightmare room would have been more on the level, like, of older middle grade or, uh, middle graders that just, like, really like spookier stuff but yeah I mean it was okay then the next one I read was uh, Locker 13 and this one was about I think his name was Luke and he's the most unluckiest kid ever so unlucky that he ends up with Locker number 13 <laughs> But his best friend, Hannah, or whatever, of course, she is, like, so lucky. Like, you know, she could enter a contest and she's going to win. She could bend over and find the money on the ground. Uh, anything, she aces her classes. She is super lucky. 
And then, uh, for his birthday, he's like, he wishes he had her luck, you know, and everything. And then, all of a sudden, he starts having a lot of good luck. And a lot of things are happening, going his way, basketball-wise, and all these kind of things. And it happens because he, he thinks it's because he found this little skull that is, uh, he thinks it's bringing him good luck. Then you, you find out some things about that and how it pertains to Hannah and all this stuff. And for me, I thought this one was more of like a be careful of what you wish for. I think, I don't know if that's the theme through all of these nightmare ones, but it seems to be like that was kind of it. Like, I mean, in the don't forget me, you know, she wishes that sometimes her brother was not around and then everybody starts to forget him. And in this one, he wishes he has all the luck. And when he starts to get luck, it was really good at first. And then things don't quite go so well. And there is a reason why he was so lucky and the consequences of that luck and everything. So I liked that one probably better than the first one, don't forget me. But um, both of them weren't, weren't too bad. But yeah, if I was going to pick which one I liked the best, I, I think Lucky 13. I need to read more of these books to get a better assessment of them, but I didn't have time to <laughs> read all the Oral Steins in like one week. So, And it's the same with the Fear Street books. I, I could only get my hand on Party Games in audiobook, and it was a Fear Street relaunch that happened in like 2014, I think it was. And I know it's supposed to be for teens. But it didn't feel very uh, teen to me. I mean, the characters might have been like teenage, but I still think that if you have a middle grader who has a good grasp of like the horror books and things that they like, and they like super spooky, I think that they would still be fine for for middle graders. Like maybe the ones that are, you know, eleven or twelve, or into like this, the uh, younger teens, like thirteen or whatever. And stuff but this one the party games was about a girl I think her name was Rachel Boy, I'm reaching for these characters names because you know I don't remember them I think her name was Rachel and she was excited because Brandon fear has invited her to his birthday party he's always has these really elaborate parties and her friend doesn't want her to go because he's a fear and of course there's always there's this thing about the fears and uh, she's like so excited because she thinks he's so dreamy and she just wants to go. And so they end up, you know, she ends up going to the party and it's on like this, the like island or like this place that they have. And um, everybody's there and some really bad things start to happen. And then you kind of you kind of find out some things about that he likes to play games. That's one of the things. But it's what happens whenever. Um, things aren't exactly a game so kind of like a um, the boy that cried wolf kind of thing you know because you play these pranks on your friends and then when something really happens bad nobody's going to believe you <laughs> and that was kind of to me what party games was about and the first part was just like oh, okay it's going this way and then the, the second part of it kind of was like, oh, okay, well, this is a little bit more interesting. And then it ended, and then I was just like, okay, whatever. I mean, you know, it they couldn't make it too spooky because it was, you know, an R.L. Stein book, and his books aren't really too spooky. And I do think, even though, it, even though it's for teens, it was probably for, like, the younger end of the teens to, you know, still into, like, the older middle grade at least that's what it felt like to me I have read some teen horror books and thriller books and they had you know and maybe it's just because it was you know a different time period too and we've gotten used to the spookier ones that are out now um, they just they're a lot spookier I mean I, I'm reading some spooky middle grade books that I think would creep out a lot of adults, <laughs> let alone kids. And sometimes I think, wow, this is for middle grade. These feel more like on the level of like 
little kids horror books. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I enjoyed all of them. I had fun reading them. I mean, I wasn't bored or anything like that. I did have fun reading them. They were, you know, just fine. But uh, it does make me want to read more, so I do think that I will try to fit in more uh, Goosebumps and Nightmare Rooms and try to get my hands on, like, the original Fear, Fear Street instead of the relaunch. I think I would like to try some of the more original ones. I think, like, the first one is called The New Girl. And um, give those a try. So, yeah, there will be more R.L. Stein reading in the future. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was fun. It was just kind of fun to see uh, w what the level of spook is for like back then because it's definitely a lot different now in, in 2022 what they spooky because like my favorite spooky book that I'm always talking about, Whispering Pines, it, 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 it makes this look like an adult spooky book Goosebumps do. <laughs> So it's like, this, I mean, come on, we got, we have this, and we have this, and so, yeah, this one is just, you know, a little scare, where this one can give you a big scare, and so, yeah, but overall, that's my thoughts on R.L. Stein and reading his books. Have you read um, R.L. Stein? Um, did you read them as an adult, or did you read them when you were younger and they came out? Because, like, like, all the R.L. Stein books for me came out after I was a teenager or later, so I didn't really get to read them in the time period that they were supposed to be in. But I know there are younger viewers out there, and so did you read them during that time, or did you read them as an adult like me? Or have you not tried R.L. Stein because you think they're going to be too, um, too cheesy because they are, um, you know, kids' books? I think they're, they're fun, I mean, even as an adult. They're, they're fun. I mean, you're not going to get scared, probably, but they're fun. So I think if you haven't tried any, but you would like to try some, you should give them a try and see what you think. And I do know that there are some uh, booktubers out there that have uh, reading vlogs, reading the whole entire, like, Goosebumps. Um, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin has re a reading vlog that's very, very long, <laughs> but he read all of the Goosebumps. In like the first Goosebump series, like the originals and stuff like that. So yeah, there are some out there that have. I just dabbled. <laughs> I was like, that. That's a little bit of a big. That's a big reading project. I just dabbled a little bit, and had fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.